the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France, and the Vuelta a España make up cycling's grand tours, the three most prestigious races in the sport. With each one featuring over 3,300 kilometers of racing, few riders attempt two in a year, whilst only 32 professional cyclists in history have completed all three in the same season. This year, one man has been attempting to become the first amateur cyclist to achieve that impressive feat. For the past five months, Australia's Keith Tuffley has been cycling every kilometre and every stage of this year's Grand Tours, on the same day as the professionals, only hours ahead of the main peloton. Whilst the professional riders each have a caravan of support staff as well as their teammates to help them through the stages, Keith has been tackling each one by himself. Spending a total of 63 days on his bike, he's attempted to climb over 150,000 vertical meters, ridden over 10,000 kilometers, and tackled some of the most demanding stages in professional cycling. They are tough. I mean, there's no doubt about there's some days where you really, uh, you know, you think about crikeys, what, what, why am I doing this? Um, you know, it can be lonely and it's wet and cold and, you know, you're just not having a good day. And, uh, but, you know, you've got, to, you've got to look at the context of the overall adventure. you just got to think about the, the experience and the fun and the, you look around and see things that you wouldn't see from a car. I think the biggest thing is yeah, that, that's that mental discipline, being able to keep the mind working as opposed to just getting depressed and down, you just gotta stay positive. This year's Giro d'Italia provided the toughest challenge for both Keith and the professionals, with torrential rain and snow making for one of the most gruelling grand tours in recent memory. On several days, conditions were so bad that the race organizers had to cancel or shorten stages that Keith had already ridden, meaning he completed more of the demanding course than the pros. Yeah, it was, it was really brutal. Uh, you know, it was unseasonable weather, and, um, you know, they had to, what, change the route on two occasions. They cancelled a day because of the snow, the blizzard. Um, and the, the lasting memory for me was one day which they cancelled and I uh, got up at five o'clock in the morning and got to the top of uh, Paso del Tonali and it was minus five degrees and it was blowing a, a, an absolute gale at the top and yeah, it must have been minus 15 with the windshield factor and I was wearing uh, a few layers so it was okay when I started. When I got to the top it was just, it was freezing. Um, but you know, it was at the time yeah, it was difficult, but I wouldn't say bad memories at all. It was all actually, looking back on it, really good memories. And uh, mixing up those challenging days together with the fantastic days was, is, is part of the adventure, part of the, the overall experience. Having cycled the route of the Tour de France in 2011, as well as the Giro last year, Keith was already well aware of the demands posed by the world's greatest cycle races. This year, however, marked the 100th edition of the Tour de France, making it a unique time to be part of the great race. There was something special about it this year. I thought the course that they had chosen was incredibly good. Every day, and just about every kilometre of every day, it was, was just a great route. So I thought they chose just some of the best parts of France to, to cycle through. I also thought that the crowds were just really, really strong this year. Yeah, it was just a lovely family and, and community spirit to it. It was just a, a magnificent route. I, I loved it. I, I really loved it. I thought that the tour this year was, was quite special. Although Keith has been tackling each stage away from the main race, a number of professional cyclists have been inspired by his efforts. Every team competing in this year's Vuelta donated a signed jersey to his project, whilst others have taken their support a step further, with former sprint great and 12-time Tour de France stage winner Mario Cipollini riding the second stage of this year's tour alongside the Australian. So cycling with Mario was, was a real highlight. You know, 
lot of fans on the road on the way there. And they all recognised Mario, so constantly I was just hanging on behind and hearing the chants of Mario, Mario. I mean, he's, he's, he's a bit of a show pony in a nice way, but deep down he's a really nice person. And he was looking after me and, and, and caring, that made sure that I could finish the day. And uh, he, he was uh, an absolute delight to cycle with. It was a, a, a true highlight of, the, of not just the Grand Tours project, but actually all of my cycling experience. He was a, an absolute delight. Whilst completing all three Grand Tours has come to represent a huge personal goal for Keith, the challenge has not just been about his individual accomplishments. Having raised funds for environmental causes on previous Grand Tour adventures, the aim of this journey has been to use cycling to promote the wider cause of sustainability. You know, the concept of cycling is an extremely efficient way to travel. You're close to nature, you're close to people. Uh, it's a fun way of, of being involved with the local community. It uh, keeps you fit. You know, so it's got very strong links to the whole philosophy and approach to sustainability. Um, you, know, you don't need to get in your large car and, and fill it up with petrol to go to the shops. You can get in your bike and do that. And if we all did that, um, you know, the world would be a better place. In keeping with that environmental philosophy, one of the great rewards of Keith's journey has been the incredible scenery he's been able to experience along the way. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, especially those days we're not expecting it. You know, you just don't know the country and and you go, oh, I've got no idea what this, what today is going to be like, and suddenly you're cycling along this uh, ravine or this uh, river or this uh, through these mountains that you just just weren't expecting. And I, I love those days when you just don't know what's going to happen. It turns out to be brilliant. Um, yeah, the tour was particularly good this year. Having having said that, the the Vuelta, you know, the third day in the Pyrenees was something I wasn't expecting. It was a, a blue sky day after two days of soaking wet. And it was uh, just just one of yeah, the best days of cycling I've, I've ever experienced. Uh, wild rivers, big mountains, a, a brilliant finish at the top of this ski resort. It was uh, incredible. Having begun his adventure in Naples at the start of the Giro back in May, the last leg of Keith's journey gets underway just outside Madrid, with the Spanish capital holding the final stage of the 2013 Vuelta a España. Well, it's an interesting feeling because having done 62 days and one, one more day to go, it's um, a real sense of achievement and you know just a, a lot to look back on. Um, so many epic moments and beautiful places to see and just great experiences. It's been a real, a very intense but very uh, exhilarating experience. And uh, we're coming to an end today here in Madrid. Beautiful day, but uh, no, it's, it's a really, really great feeling. celebrated his 49th birthday during the journey, Keith finds himself in good company in Madrid as America's Chris Horner claims the Vuelta title to become the oldest winner of a Grand Tour at the age of 41. Although Keith Tuffley won't be receiving a jersey for his accomplishments, having ridden well over 10,000 kilometres and tackled some of the steepest mountain climbs in professional cycling, his journey remains a remarkable achievement. You 
Now, when I started this, I mean, I, I thought I could probably do all three tours. Um, obviously, I didn't know that I could, but it, it, it's amazing what you can put your body through and your mind through if you're really focused on it and determined to do it. And, and I think uh, doing something like this, it expands, you always expands your horizons about what can be done. And if nothing else, if it promotes or encourages other people to be able to push themselves a bit harder and, and look broader and to be more ambitious with what we can achieve, yeah, I think, I think it's that sort of sense of, of being able to achieve more than what you initially think once you put your mind to it.